Let's imagine that you, you know, you figure out the root of this autism and you're like, you know what's causing it um, specifically. Do you think it's something that can be corrected? Like cells can be reprogrammed when they're embryos or when they, you know, are born? Or do you think it's something where you would just know how to identify it and be able to like scan the existing eggs uh, to, you know, maybe select certain ones that won't have it for in vitro or, or something of that nature? Yeah, uh, Joe, that, that's a great question. Uh, but before I answer that question, I want to make sure that we are talking about the severe types of autism. Because this population is so heterogeneous uh, that there are people that are high functioning. Um, so they have jobs, they have families. They don't even see autism as a problem. Sometimes they see it as a superpower that they have. Um, so this population, they don't want to be treated. They, they, they don't want to be uh, cured of anything. They don't think that um, uh, they have anything uh, that are problematic. Um, so we're not targeting those just for the audience um, to be very um, uh, clear on that. Uh, so we are targeting the ones that are severe. So we are talking about people that have hundreds of seizures per day, um, people that cannot walk or talk, that cannot feed themselves, that needs one-to-one -one help uh, for life. So these are people that are very uh, dependent on um, the community, on their parents. And when their parents are not there, um, so what, what, what should we do? Um, so we are targeting those people. We want to make them as much independent as possible. So they and their families, um, not only they seek for a treatment, but they deserve a better treatment than, than what's out there. So having said that, having like clusterized uh, my target um, to your uh, question, uh, the answer is yes. Uh, all the data that we have, both with animal models as well as the brain organoid model, suggests that if you know the genetic alteration and if you correct uh, this genetic alteration in the cells, you basically revert back um, to what we call a typical or, or a normal development. Um, so, and this is what we are trying to do in people right now because it's, it's, it's much easier to do it in a, in a lab uh, both in animals or in the organoids, but now moving to a clinical application, there is a challenge. Um, again, because the human brain is so big, um, we have to target uh, so many cells. Um, and there are certain things that we can do with mouse, such as genetic manipulation that we cannot do um, with uh, a human that is already born. Um, so um, the challenge now is how can we translate the applications or the treatments that we, we know it might have a beneficial um, contribution to that person, how can we actually deliver it into clinics? And that's, that's where some of these companies are trying to, to bridge. They're taking the, the technology that we have in the lab and they are bridging to take it to the clinical side, performing clinical trials, learning uh, by, by, by doing these clinical trials, how to best implement um, this type of technology. That's where we are right now.